The Council on Competitiveness was born in 1986, when the global economy was changing rapidly. Where the U.S. had been the undisputed world economic leader, Japan and Germany were on a path to overtake U.S. living standards and competitiveness. Foreign nationals were buying up U.S. assets. Our manufacturing base was shrinking. Our debt load, both personal and national, was growing. For the first time in decades, Americans began to question whether our country would be left behind, rendered a second-tier economy. John Young, a visionary business leader, conceived of the idea to create a National Council on Competitiveness, which would help develop a blueprint for stopping this slide. Young's simple yet highly innovative idea was to bring together leaders from industry, academia, and labor to study our economy and to design real-world game plans to meet the serious economic challenges we faced. Well, in the mid-80s, uh, there were a lot of competitive problems. President Reagan actually convened a committee of about 36 people, of which I was chair, to take a deep look of what we could do to improve our nation's ability to compete. John Young was a great leader of business. He saw the country was not looking at something very important, and he took it on himself to construct the council and had the wisdom to realize that competitiveness and now innovation, these are sort of all hands on deck activities. We needed an organization that could own that agenda and come together periodically to freshen it and be the advocates when these particular issues came up like trade policy or manufacturing success and have some really knowledgeable, in-depth people. The Council's first major project was to define and measure our nation's competitiveness with the rest of the world. It developed the Competitiveness Index, perhaps the Council's most important achievement. The index is a regular benchmark of how America and Americans are doing, both as compared to themselves over time and as compared to the rest of the competitive and global economy. This was uh, some path-breaking work on figuring out how to measure a nation's ability to compete. And that leads you to ask the question, well, what can we do to improve? Our nation fundamentally rewrote the competitiveness game plan for the last decade of the 20th century. The Council focused on the globalization of research and development activity and convened experts to study how to unlock the nation's information infrastructure. One of my proudest moments once was uh, we jointly hosted, we being MIT and the Council, the first National Innovation Summit. I ran into the late uh, Congressman George Brown, who of course is a legend in issues like this, and he said to me, you know, that meeting you guys had up at MIT, that actually changed the whole way we viewed these things in Washington. The technology boom transformed how the entire world thought about innovation. Other countries copied initiatives spearheaded by the Council, such as the Council's recommendations for public-private partnerships for innovation and technology clusters. What that project really illustrates is that a lot of the strategic thinking needs to occur at the level of states and, and cities, and, and that if, if regions can build on their strength, find unique assets, build unique clusters uh, in their region, uh, and, 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 and integrate all the public policy and private sector collaboration around those areas, uh, that's really the tool to driving growth and prosperity at, at the regional level. We're in global competition now for every job we have in this country. We need people that are out there that can still work with their hands and get the job done, whether it's construction, manufacturing. The Council now focused on how our nation would keep pace with its new global competitors. The need for constant reinvention in the face of perpetual global change, turbulence, and transition has been the one constant theme in the Council's 25-year existence. The context of the Council today in an economy that's linked so tightly by the internet and through e-commerce and through uh, digital communications and so forth is quite different than the circumstances were back in the 80s or even the early 90s. Well, the Council really created also this concept that the United States could not succeed unless we innovate. The Council's driving mission has been to foster innovation. The translation of new ideas into disruptive and positive economic change for every level of our society. 
from business to government to education. For me, the central issues end up being, one is it deals with human capital, both the attraction and retention development of it. There's a component of that that is uh, related to uh, really good education systems to grow our own, but it also is to opening up borders, uh, visa applications, so that we can get the best and brightest and keep them here. Today, the challenges are broader. Uh, they're more complex, they're asymmetric, and they relate to not only uh, innovation and competitiveness per se, but they also relate to energy security, uh, homeland and national security. Are we going to be able to continue to make things in the United States? Are we going to be able to continue to manufacture, create jobs? And I say that because I really think manufacturing is at the heart of the middle class. And the middle class is what has made America the great economy of the world over the last 100 years. Before long, the U.S. will no longer be the biggest economy in the world. China will overtake the U.S. I'd say the challenges today are trying to reinvent uh, the U.S. manufacturing base to be able to be very, very export-oriented because the export part of, of our business is going to have to grow if we're going to continue to grow as an economy. One of the top three manufacturers in Japan said thank you. Thank you for the resilient study the Council on Competitiveness did because I'm charged in my company to figure out what we do to avoid another Fukushima and how do we become more resilient. The Council on Competitiveness Study from the United States is the best document I've seen to do that. I thought it was unique we came full circle, that we started competing with Japan and now we're actually helping them in a time of need. The United States still is the premier country in the world and the premier economy leading the world economics. The nature of American competitiveness, the core where regions are competing against each other and cities and towns are competing against each other and universities are competing against each other. We are in dogged competition against each other while at the same time we cooperate with each other. To understand the United States, you have to understand that competition is everything.